Ever since Kawasaki's new Ninja 650 landed in India, it's been spoiling for a fight. Its rival, the Ducati Monster 795. We've got both the motorcycles lined up here to find us the answer to the question whether the Japanese's sensible nature can overpower the Italian's passion. Intense, alert, and ready for combat. That's the ninja. It's all emphasized by the ragged lines of the headlamp, the channels and rents on the fairing. It certainly has the oomph factor that was lacking in the earlier motorcycle. But when you're pitted against this, the going can't be easy. The monster uses its minimalist design to create a cocktail of emotions. It feels basic and raw, yet at the same time it's effortlessly stylish. But in terms of character, these two motorcycles are a bit different. The monster is a street naked, while the ninja is more of a spot tourer. As a result, the ninja boasts of a full-size windscreen with three-stage adjustment. It also has a nice analog and digital display. It has a big stepped saddle that's got ample width for the pillion. The monster also has a stepped seat, but the pillion doesn't get grab handles. Come to think of it, there isn't much of a pillion seat either. There's no deflector to protect the rider as he crouches over the tank. But it makes up for all that it lacks in charisma. Now the Ninja 650 is very stylish, but when you are pegged against an Italian icon in terms of design, like the monster, the going can't be easy. This thing really has a raw, brutal aura around it. And that kind of even extends to the performance side of it because the Ducati does seem to have an advantage on paper. Now both these motorcycles here use short stroke, two cylinders, two valves per cylinder engines. The Kawasaki uses a 649cc liquid cooled parallel twin, while the Ducati uses a bigger 803cc air and oil cooled L twin. Dual overhead camshafts power the Ninja's head, while the Monster exercises Ducati's desmodromic system. Now, the most thrilling part about a big motorcycle is the performance on tap. The Ducati has a big advantage over the Kawasaki as its 187 kg of curb weight is a lot lighter than the 211 kg of the Kawasaki. The Monster's motor also punches out a much healthier 87 bhp and its rumble from the two exhaust cans just gets tastier as the revs rise. If you let the revs cross the 4000 rpm mark, the Ducati will thrill you no end. In comparison, the Ninja sounds meeker and its displacement of 649cc and 71 bhp of power are simply smaller. But in a straight line, when accelerating from standstill, sure, the Ducati is faster. But at the 100 km hour mark, the Kawasaki does a superb job to stay within two tenths of a second of the Ducati. But as the revs climb, the gap widens to over two seconds by the time you hit 160 km an hour. Both motorcycles have easy to use clutches and gearboxes. One grouse on the Ninja though was that the gear lever was a bit short, so changing gears required that the foot be placed a bit forward. That aside, the Ninja is the more practical motorcycle for daily use. Its parallel twin engine offers a very linear power delivery which is really responsive at low speeds in the city. Now these two motorcycles are completely different in terms of character. The Monster 795 is all about exhilaration and excitement. Its motor kind of wakes up in the mid-range and explodes on its way to the red line. 
put it in city conditions and it really does struggle. It doesn't feel you know, particularly great to ride at low speeds in our stop go Indian conditions, which is where the Ninja really does excel. It feels very practical, it has great low and mid-range torque, so it does feel very easy in our conditions. It cruises nicely out on the highway and it does pretty much everything the monster does, but it misses out on that excitement of things. Now let's see whether that vein even continues in how they perform around corners and over broken Indian roads. When it comes to hardware, the Ducati is offering superb equipment. The discs are 320mm Brembo's at the front and they use steel braided hoses. The front fork is an upside down unit and there's a cast alloy swing arm at the rear. The Ninja feels more ordinary. Its petal disc brakes are only 300mm and it uses conventional telescopic forks at the front. And the swing arm at the rear is a multi-tube unit. Sadly, both bikes were missing ABS. It should at least be offered as an option. On the road, the bike from Ducati's dual Brembo disc brakes feels sharp and immediate. The steel braided hoses give a crisp feel at the levers too. The bite from Ninja's Tokiko petal discs seems a bit dull and lazy in comparison. But in the braking test, the Ninja performed very well, holding its own against the Monster. With its sporty seating position and upside down forks, the Monster promises to be the more involving motorcycle to ride. It is a hoot, but when you attack corners, it doesn't team with confidence. There is a slight knifey edge to its dynamics. The Kawasaki in comparison feels more sedate, but its fluid style of cornering is fun and it will let you wind your way around a set of twisties pretty quickly. On the open road, the Ducati has the legs over the Kawasaki, but with nothing to protect you from the wind, sustained triple digit speeds won't be all that comfortable. The seating position is also very sporty and it takes a toll on your back and wrists. The Ninja, meanwhile, has a three-stage wind deflector to keep the blast off your face and shoulders. And the more upright seating position, well, it's definitely easier on your wrist and more comfortable for the long haul. Of the two, the Ninja 650 is the more frugal motorcycle. Bajaj's far-flung pro biking service network also offers you greater peace of mind when you think about it from the ownership experience point of view. So the Monster 795 is this red-blooded creature that really knows how to pluck at your heartstrings. I mean, when it comes to dynamics, it just feels sportier than the Ninja. It's so tightly packaged, it has this sporty setup, and its brakes really offer this phenomenal bite. I would have liked more grip from the rear tires, but you know, the power from that L twin motor, 803 cc, with you know a lot more power on tap than the Ninja, just overpowers it so easily. So this is a motorcycle that looks the part and really does perform as an exciting machine. But the Ninja counters all of that by offering you huge doses of practicality. It's a motorcycle that you can spend riding all day, cover huge amounts of kilometers, even with a pillion on board. It's got a wide seat, it's got grab rails, it's suspension setup, it's such that you'll feel comfortable on it. Riding position is also that way, and the engine character just makes it so flexible. And well, little else to fault on this motorcycle. Another big advantage in its favor is its price tag. It's over a lakh cheaper than the Ducati Monster 795. So overall, if you're looking for a motorcycle, to really, really use on a daily basis, the Kawasaki Ninja 650 really does make sense.